Hi, I'm Meta, and for almost two past years I've been developing my dream game, Robo Samurai. For a long time I didn't have anything to show to hook interest to the game, but now I can finally show you some of my progress. The first devlog, which is the one you are watching right now, is all about the world, characters and story of the game. I underestimated how hard it is to summarize the game's story without spoiling it. That's why I won't be talking about the whole game, but only the background reactions within the first chapter of the story. You should also keep in mind that the dates mentioned may change since I haven't figured out the whole timeline and some things may just work in a different time period. In the background there will be concepts that I drew, uh, some gameplay of the current build or some artwork that will give you some sort of idea for the vibe or aesthetic I'm going for within a specified area of the lore. Near the end of the video there will be a segment I call a game status report. That's dedicated to news about the current state of the game in general. Without further ado, Please enjoy the video. The year is 2050. The main character, Nyx, lives a peaceful life in a modern childcare home. No one knows what happened to his parents, but he was just brought there one day. He finds a friend that's older than him that teaches Nyx about the wonders of technology. And he decides he wants to improve on his abilities furthermore in the future. One night they sneak out and go to the city to have some fun playing arcade and eating things that they can't usually eat until they are suddenly jumped by a trio of delinquents. The friend defends Nyx and manages to end the gang himself, but knowing that he just killed three people, the friend ran away to the distance, leaving Nyx. He didn't hear from him ever since. Several years later, in high school, he met Elena and Kira, but the relationship didn't go anywhere up until college. Even then, Kira continued to push the rivalry between her and Nyx for the love and attention of Elena, that is. After he had turned 18, Nyx inherited money that his parents had left. It was a lot, but he got him started. And got another small apartment in the city for himself. Luckily, that wouldn't be the case for too long due to his intelligence in technology, allowing him to land himself in a rather prestigious college, which just so happened to be the same college his old friend and rival Alina and Kira attended. The relationship between Nyx and Alina flourished, while Kira was constantly in the shadow of their learning progress. Her rivalry eventually evolved into hatred towards Nyx, for the reason I unfortunately cannot tell you as it would be too big of a spoiler. Her hatred clouded her mind and corrupted her. It drove her to the brink of insanity and in her breakdown she attempted to kill her longtime rival and self-proclaimed enemy. But her failed assassination only led to a lengthy court case and a permanent removal from her dream college, though these are problems that could be easily solved with the sum of wealth that she had owned, for even in college Kira had already established a massive company called Nastand, which houses many great scientists working on a world-changing technology. How was no one aware she was the figurehead of an enormous company? Well, a little bit of money can go a long way, especially if you invest that money in an old friend named Seraphine. Now that we are in the pre-game era, I think it's suitable to roughly describe our main three characters. Let's start with Nyx, the protagonist of the game. He's a 21-year-old freelance robot mechanic. He does part-time jobs around the city to make some money. Uh, he's a not-so-tall boy with short, messy and wavy light brown hair. He has light blue eyes and a very feminine face. In his free time, he constructs robots and tries hacking biotopes in order to remove the privacy invasive parts of them. Before Alina's kidnapping, he spent a lot of time with her, doing all sorts of things couples do. Uh, I'll spare you the details, you can imagine what they were doing. Elena is a beautiful biotechnology scientist with long brown curls covering her dark eyes. Her whole life she was interested in connecting the human with the computer. That's why she went to college, and because of her incredible skills, soon after she went up to the position of a lead biotechnology developer at Nascent. Nascent is run by previously mentioned Kira. The tallest of the bunch, Kira has a black mullet with the ends painted red. She really loves that color. She has red eyes and glasses, like mentioned before, her whole life she was in the shadow of her two mates. She is a mentally unstable, psychotic genius that absolutely hates competition. It's not her fault Nyx gets in the way of her eternal domination, I mean. She was raised by babysitters. The rumor says that her parents were old gang members that had to get off grid after it had broken up. They left her a big pile of money, that's why she never had financial problems and could easily monetize her business ambitions. After finishing college, Nyx and Alina continued their love life, and eventually they moved in together in a much more appropriate apartment. 
While Nix continued to work as a freelancer, in 2060, Elena designed the biochip called the New Beginning. That was the prime of NASA's progress. What are biochips, you ask? Well, simply put, they are biometric monitors that show practically everything about its user and can be used to access a multitude of different things, from a user's heart rate to fingerprints to even their licenses plate. Talk about a lack of privacy, am I right? Unfortunately, like all things in the dystopia, it all went downhill. No longer after the debut, the chips were used as a way to manipulate the population in order to buy things related to nascent, by showing wrong biometrics on the chips with life-threatening records. That made products like life-changing soda, a ridiculous concept indeed, a very valuable product that literally everybody in the city wanted. In Elena's defense, she only wanted to do good and push humanity in a good direction, but we all know how that went. After she had realized that bad things Nascent Incorporated had done, she decided to quit. <laughs> yeah, no. You really think Kira would let a person so valuable for the company quit? Still, keep in mind that nobody, even Elena, knew that the Nascent CEO is the psycho that had been terrorizing her for the past five years. That's why Elena gets kidnapped in order to not leak anything. You may say that leaking all of the bad things the corporation did isn't a threat since they manipulate all of the facts. Yes, and that's why there is a bigger reason for the kidnapping of Lena. But I won't tell you. I was planning on describing the whole prologue, but couldn't quite make it both appealing, informative and make it not spoil everything. I'm planning to make a nice comic-like cutscene for the prologue and since it's also kind of a tutorial for the game's mechanics, I spared you some time listening. Nyx successfully escapes the building he had woken up in the prologue. He is conducted by Seraphine, Azuri's CEO. He explains the evil plan as Nasset has been working on and presents him a contract. The contract wants Nyx to bring in all of the pieces of the puzzle to him in order to make sure they are destroyed and he will get info on where Alina is being captured. Nyx accepts the offer. On a side note, the game takes place during the children's protest where most of the nascent child companies started a protest against it because of the poor management, small pay and bad treating of the CEOs and terrible working conditions. Unfortunately enough, since the child companies had been bought by nascent itself, the huge corporation has complete control all over them. As such, the only way they could have ransomed nascent was to hide all of the pieces of machinery that had been created for the evil plan. The reason why Kira wants this technology so bad is because Nascent already has everything, except one thing, the power that the government has. As corrupt as it is, some democracy standards still apply. As such, Nascent is not connected with the government, so they don't have full control and had to step back from huge amount of decisions. The political system of the authorized non-specified country in the game is taking place in remains of an anarcho-capitalist one. The government has almost no hand in how the country operates, the economy is ruled by huge private corporations like Nascent, and even though that's in the case, uh, Nascent is still being controlled or limited by the government. That means they can't kill people or have like bad standards in the in the cooking industry. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what illegal things you can do as a company. Like, I don't have a company. Like the fuck. Because of Kira's mental illnesses, she really hates the feeling of being controlled, which made overthrowing the government one of Nassen's priorities. One may ask, since Nassen is the biggest corporation out there, they would have the resources to do it. Fortunately, the constitution forbids any non-governmental affiliation or person the right to own guns and military-grade equipment. There are some exceptions like security systems. Illegal gun trading is obviously very prominent these days, but the government is more keen on controlling the private corporations rather than the people. Ironic. On top of that, the country is being sponsored by a bigger one and it's equipped with the newest top-of-the-line security implementations and that's why it's so incredibly hard to overthrow it. I hope the thing you just heard wasn't too corny or boring and that you actually enjoyed your time watching. Now, off to the second segment of the video, the game status report. Hello and welcome to the Games Fellows Report. In this show we bring you the hottest level summary news that news can get. First topic of today's show being the new test build from the creators of games like... Oh, this, this guy didn't do any games. Uh, we brought you the newest build of the first installment of the Robo Samurai series of games. 
The main new thing of the build being complete re-implementation of the game's combat system. You can slash, you can kick, you can air slash, you can do very unbalanced and weird down down slash that emits bursts of energy that insta kills enemies, and many more abilities to come. Combine slash and kicks to create beautiful combos. Slash slash slash, kick kick kick, slash slash kick, kick kick forward kick, and many more combos. Fight your way through waves of enemies in the brand new endless mode and customize the enemy spawning to your liking. All this and much more for the low low price of zero dollars. Get your copy now at metapika.itch.io slash samurai. And now for the second and last report of the night. There had been rumors that the model of Nyx, the protagonist of the game we are talking about today, is being made. We actually have some leaked images of the creator's blender right here. Now skin, now beautiful. That's it for the game report today. Be sure to tune in the next audition in the next Robo Samurai download. We thank you for your time and see you again. The best chemist in the world, Walter Ryan. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it you think you see? Do you know how much I make here? I mean, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Yeah!